savageorlandomagic.com. Cliff, obviously day number two into training camp. What stood out to you about the second day and, and what were your takeaways from the day of camp? Uh, well, I thought the attitude was good again. I thought our intensity was good. Um, you know, we got up and down the floor a lot again today, actually probably more than yesterday. And, um, you know, it's the same thing as some good, some bad. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll watch the film and, uh, you know, I'll try to do better tomorrow. But, I, I mean, there's, there's you know, I, again, like the biggest thing at this time of year to me is the approach. And I feel like our guys are, are uh, working, uh, helping each other, very verbal on the floor, very positive with, with each other. And I think, like, we're making good progress. Uh, Eric Wilson, 1070. Hey, Coach, um, kind of piggybacking off that, when you look at this team from a defensive standpoint, are you happy with the progress, even though it's only two days? Yeah, to be honest, we, we haven't really done – we've done a lot more offense than defense. And uh, we're going to do more defense tomorrow. We're going to do a lot of pick-and-roll defense. We haven't done as much. Uh, you know, so that for sure is is uh, hurting us. Um but I want to, you know, again, I want to be able to get up and down the floor and scrimmage a lot. And to do that, we've got to have enough offense in so it's purposeful. And uh, so we're going to, uh, you know, we've done some defense, but we'll do a lot more tomorrow. Josh Cohen, OrlandoMagic.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, what are your early impressions of the two two-way contract guys, Kareem Mayne and Jordan Bone? Both hard workers. I mean, they, they were here like the last few days before camp, and I watched them do their individual workouts uh, a couple of days. Hard workers, good attitudes, um, you know, serious players, the kind of guys that that you want to have around that, that uh, you know, you could see, you know, why they're here, why they're having an opportunity. Uh, and I think they'll both have the attitude and the, kind of work ethic necessary, necessary to give themselves a chance. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, given the uncertainty about how, you know, whether players will test positive during the season and, and the possibility that you'll have to use two-way guys, do you start to think about, well, how do I plug in Mane and, and, and Bone if, if it is necessary? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously that's what training camp's for. I mean, I think you, you know, you do that with everybody. That is one advantage of scrimmaging a lot. Um, you know, I think that by the time, you know, we'll practice tomorrow and then practice Monday and then take Tuesday off. And I think even by then, you'll be able to get like a, a decent feel for, uh, you know, like where those guys are at and, what kind of things they can do to help a team. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, it's obviously very, very early in the careers of both Cole Anthony and Chumo Kiki, but what do you think that they could bring to, to the team, uh, you know, early in their NBA careers? Well, I, I think the, the one thing that I like about both of them is they both have natural IQ. You know, they both have a good feel for the game. Um, when you're watching them play, they make sense. And uh, that's a, I mean, it's such a big part of NBA basketball, you know, being able to play purposefully. And I think the other part is I think they both can play at both ends of the floor. Okay, Josh Cohen again. Talk about the impact James Ennis had toward the, uh, in the second half of last season and what your expectations are of him this year. Well, I mean, he brought a, you know, he brings a natural energy level to the team every time he's on the floor. He's, he's a terrific competitor, terrific defender, uh, good cutter. And um, he's, I believe, a career between 36 and 30, 37% three-point shooter. So, um, you know, he had, a, he had a positive impact on him last year. And I think he'll be much more comfortable this year because he'll have training camp, uh, you know, to, to learn. Last year, he had to learn everything on the fly. And this year, you know, again, I mean, we're starting from scratch. And I think that'll help him also. 
Dan Savage. Cliff, when you have guys who have such a varying degree of, you know, conditioning levels coming into camp, you have some guys who, you know, just got done playing a competitive bat playoff basketball in July, others that haven't, you know, played since March. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you uh, balance out uh, the start of camp and, and getting these guys into conditioning to ramp up to preseason? Yeah, I mean, there's a, obviously there's a lot, but communicating with Lindsey um, about uh, like when we do the, like for instance, the five on five segments, um, you know, we met this morning, we'll meet every morning. We spoke yesterday after practice. And um, I mean, she has data, you know, every, you know, it is now everything's measured. We have data on um, which guys, you know, put forth the most energy. Um, you know, she knows, you know, which guys are in the best shape, which guys have done the most. And so she's, you know, really helpful that way. So a lot is relying on her. And then when we do the live thing, you know, the guys who are in better shape play more. You know, we don't want anybody to get hurt or lead guys into injury just by, you know, how many minutes they play. So some of the guys are not playing as much in the live segments. Um, so their conditioning is coming you know, at a pace that makes sense for where they're at. And then the other guys that are in really good shape, they play more. Dan Savage again. You know, Cliff, again, for the young guys like uh, Chuma and Cole, you know, how much of uh, the early part of camp is, is just getting the reps through the system and then how much is, is you know, going back through the film with them and, and, and walking them through – mistakes and corrections you know how, how does that balance play out no I, th I think it's both of those things I mean it, it's it's hard because the college you know they both obviously played in terrific college programs for great coaches but the NBA game is just you know you know we have so much more offense in the defense is is much more difficult because of the pick and roll schemes and the great player schemes um and, you know, you can't be simple in our league. I mean, you've got to have a lot of offense in and you have to be able to play defense against the exceptional players. So, uh, you know, it that's where not having summer league to get a foundation and not having September workouts, um, you know, is, again, they're going to be in the same situation that all the other younger players are. But it doesn't mean that they can't be a big part of things. Um you know, I, I think that, you know, listen, everybody has their own experiences about, you know, younger players, right? Um, and I know people say he doesn't play younger players. Actually, there's a lot of things I don't do. I've always played younger players a lot. And if you want to go back, I mean, go all the way back to my first year in Charlotte, all the way through, and I played younger players here. And so it's not – I mean, the one thing – the thing that I don't like to do – is play is put players in position where they can't be successful. I don't think they grow that way. And when people say they have to play to improve, I totally disagree. They get a chance to improve in this league every day, playing against other great players. So you can argue all those things, um, but I think both of these guys can help us this year. And it'll probably be, you know, it's going to be tougher for them early. Uh, but, I mean, they're, they're in my plans. I have good confidence in both of them, and I like how they play. Okay, final question, Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, I think you, you kind of alluded to this. How much does it help a younger player, generally speaking, to have to raise his play in order to earn playing time relative to a, a capable veteran at the same position? Oh, I mean, I, again, you – I think, you know, if you talk to people, I think that, that what happens is – I'll give you an example. I was just talking to – and I'm going to name drop. I was just talking to an NFL coach, and we, we had a conversation about, you know, guys that get drafted high and are high, you know, exposure type guys and how many times it happens. He said in their league, and I think it's true in our league also, where guys get drafted and they play because they're drafted hard. And then you find out after like, you know, 12 games, this guy's not very good. And unfortunately,
you know, and this, and by the way, these guys are going to play. I don't, you know, how we got into this conversation, but you know, that whole thing is to me, it is hard because I think that uh, accountability is, you know, has become much more difficult in our league with younger players. And I think when guys don't play well and yet you still throw them out there, they're not learning the right lessons. I would also say this, in my opinion, guys first two, three years in the league, guys that have bad experiences and don't learn what it takes to really work to earn their playing time, a lot of times they never recover from that. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Coach. How come you